Oh, good. Just what we needed. Another set with up to almost 500 reprints right after a set that had 1600 reprints and a set called Core Set, which will also have lots of reprints. And Secret Lair, which is 100% reprints. And the collection of this collector's edition, which again is 100% reprints. And what else are we missing? Oh, the Commander reprints coming along. So you know a company is not doing well when all they do is reprint. And there's no original ideas. And they just ran out of... We're going back to Zendikar sometime soon, I heard. Probably, I mean, we've been to back to Ravnica three times. How many times have we been to Dom Dominaria? Twice. At least two times. Maybe in the past we went a few more times. Uh, it's just really bad. Uh, and now we're back to Pharos again. Which is a plains that no one wanted to go back to. For obvious reasons. The cards were very weak. There's no land base. So in my opinion, uh, it's very simple calculations. They're trying to milk the player base for all that they can milk. And then just sell the company or whatever. This is what happens when companies know... They're trying to increase their profits without investing into development. I can give you a few examples. Oko, he was made to sell Throne of the Elder Ren, and as soon as he was done selling the set and the new Pharaoh set came out, boom, banned. Right before, right? Banned. And now we created this Pioneer format to replace Modern, and Modern's going to replace Legacy. Again, not creative. I mean, that's not something that was mined. So EDH, one of the best formats, was not created by Wizard of the Coast. Some of the most incredible magic playing experiences, like uh, Emperor. I used to play Emperor as a kid. I don't know why no one plays Emperor. It's my favorite. I mean, it was just some random dude designed it, and that was it. Even Tiny Leaders. You got to give the guy credit. It wasn't a fun... And obviously, no one plays it anymore. But at least the dude came up with something creative. He did try to trademark it, though, and then sue people who want to use it. But, you know, but, I mean, beyond that, yeah, I think Tiny Leaders could have been a real format. And even before Pioneer, we had... What, what was the format called that people called? And it was, like, not historic, which is like a play on Pioneer. It was some other format that people talked about, but it's basically Pioneer. Wizard of Coast has, it has been some time since Wizard of Coast has come up with a original idea. And this to a company is very, very scary. Do you know why this company, this is so scary? Um, I'm going to tell you right now. When you, your company cannot come up with really good ideas, it is doomed to fail. There is no way that company can be successful, and to be quite frank, there is no way. How can I say this in a nice way? You blank yourself by creating Jumpstart and reprints. Reprints are good, but new cards are good too. The reason that reprints are good is you know how much money these cards are called. So you reprinted 500 cards and then you added 37 new cards. Let me repeat this again. The ratio of new cards to reprints is not correct. If anything, it should be 500 new cards and 37 reprints. It's closely tied to Core Set 2021. They share a lot of content and release near one another, but Jumpstart is a standalone product. I would hope so, because the cards are not legal and standard, right? There's 37 new cards. So the only cards that would be legal is if they reprinted a reprint, which would be ironic, because you could buy a reprint from the another reprinted set, not the core. So in my estimation, uh, this is a terrible idea. And 
it just doesn't make any sense. Where are the original ideas? Where are the original planes? Who, we don't, do you know we don't even have lore anymore? Now, I was never a big fan of lore, but all the lore magic channels have basically gone <laughs> belly under because there's no lore to talk about. Uh, the only saving grace, I think, is the Magic the Gathering Netflix series, which, again, I don't know if that's real or fake. I mean, they said about that movie as if it was real, but it turned out to be fake. The movie was supposed to be out like 10 years ago, something like that, 2010, with Nicolas Cage and uh, the Brian Stinger from X-Men. Uh, it, it was really bad, guys. Let's not kid ourselves. This product sucks. And... You would have to be really, really just a sheep to really buy this product. Because what you're encouraging them to do, let's say I'm Wizard of Coast. I'm lazy. I don't want to hire new people. I don't want to, you know, I want to hire a bunch of non-binary people to do the least um, possible work and then make the maximum profit. Well, I'm just going to reprint cards that are valuable. Ta-da! And I will have, think about different ways to sell them in a mystery pack, in a jump pack, in a commander's arsenal of some type in the future that we're getting, in a commander's deck, in a secret lair direct to consumer, in a collector's edition. I mean, think about it. Why, cannot, why can they not come up with really good original planes and cards? Why are we in Pharos again? Who wanted to go back to this planes? Last time it was terrible. None of the cards were good. This time it's pretty much the same. No, I'm I'm seriously asking. I get Ravnica. Ravnica was always very popular. and But Ravnica, I would say, is popular because you have 10 Shocklands in it. Right? Zendikar was popular because you had the Fetch Lands. But then the second time you returned, like, there was no Fetch Lands. It was like, oh, okay. But there was this, uh, you know, masterpiece, which I assumed would only be in Zendikar, Battle for Return to Zendikar, or something like Battle for Zendikar. And I, that was very sad. Cons of Terkir was only popular because of the five fetch lands. The land in these sets suck. Like, I, I don't know what to say. They're worth like a dollar or two. You need your lands to be worth eight, 10, 20, 25. Then it becomes interesting opening a pack and going to Friday Night Magic, opening a pack, and having like a fetch land. And the beauty of them is there are five of them. So Fable Passage, there's only one of those. I mean, if there were five different versions of Fable Passage, and, now, and they were fetch lands, and now we were uh, talking, right? Which they easily could have made it. Instead of four cards, maybe three cards, and it could be like a fetch land. It could be a weaker version of a fetch land. Still very valuable, and people were still wanting the EDH's. I mean, everyone plays that Mirage fetch line in ED8, and that's really bad. So, jumpstart. Uh, where should we go from here? This product sucks for obvious reasons. I'm not... A, there is no creativity. Um, there is a lack of... I mean, no one is trying to create new cards. And that's a huge, huge problem. Um, the reason that's such a big problem is the game is li literally dying if no one creates new cards and all we get is reprints. And re I, I know people want reprints, but this is too much, guys. The, the ratio of reprints, we have a set reprinting 1,600 blanking cards, for goodness sake. And there's not a single new card. We have another set that's reprinting 500 cards and there's 37 new cards. That aren't even playable in Standard or Modern or Pioneer. Like, the, the ratio is way off. We have Collector's Editions, which are just reprints. That's what they are. We have Secret Layers, which are just reprints. I mean, God, the last time I saw a card in Magic where I could say, wow, this took some creativity, was Oko. And that got banned like a mem effort, right? Like, it was they had no chance of surviving. Because let's say they kept Oko. Wouldn't the best deck definitely be the Oko deck then? He was already the best deck, and Yorl would fit in, I guess, you know, nicely with him. The food deck would be the best deck by a large margin. Yeah. That's why they had to ban Oko. 
That's why they banned uh, Mox Opal, was because Urza was a mistake. Like, you didn't really solve the problem. Mox Opal was fine before Urza was printed. It was after Urza was printed. Now you got a problem, and Urza decks are still pretty strong. So, in my opinion, in the Hoak, they had to ban that. And it's just really, really sad to see when um, the cards are not well-developed, they're not well-tested, and they just reprint some more. And for safety measures, their cards are not even playable in the weaker formats, right? Standard. The, the formats that people care about. Standard, Pioneer, and Modern. So they're going to do really push cards and no one can use them. <laughs> I, I, it's just too many products, too much wallet fatigue, and even beyond wallet fatigue, there, there is a very core issue. And the core issue has nothing to do with magic at all. It's that your local game store is going to die. It even without magic, if it relies on magic, maybe it dies a little faster. But without magic, um, so obviously I, I've talked about local game stores by name, and I know them very well. I know the owners of these stores local to me, and I know the owners of a lot of Oklahoma stores because I do business with them from time to time uh, relating to uh, Pokemon cards which I'm, I'm kind of getting into, but I kind of don't want to get into it. Um, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to describe it, but I am, you know, uh, Funkos and stuff. So basically what they do is they buy Funkos at 60% or not Funkos, uh, Nandroids and anime figures at 60%. Then they wrap it up and then they trade me for magic cards. And it's, it's a pretty good exchange uh, for everybody. I know that they're not doing well. One store recently, uh, maybe eight months ago, so not super recently, but they had to uh, sell everything. And the only thing I wanted from the store, again, this store is going bankrupt. So I'm buying things that like, I can buy things at a very cheap price, unfortunately, because the store is bankrupt. But the only thing I wanted was a popcorn machine and the uh, these uh, ice icy and then the Coca-Cola machines. So all I really wanted, all I negotiated, the hot dog machine, the pretzel machine, because I thought that would be pretty cool to have a startup. Now, it didn't actually happen because he eventually sold it all to one person, right? Because uh, they were also interested in those machines. The con they, was, they had like cotton candy, they had a popcorn. Yeah, they had, I already said popcorn machine, but that, that was what I wanted the most. And um, yeah, out of all of their magic cards, and they were a Magic the Gathering store, the only thing I wanted was their machines. Because I had no interest in anything else. But yeah, eventually they found a buyer to uh, take over the storefront. But it was close. Bye, guys.